Welcome to H&B Conversations with Cosmo and Rivka. Hey, everybody. Hello. Happy um, Sunday or whatever day of the week. Whatever the day. It, yeah, whatever day it is. Um, so you're going to give us our international greeting now. Oh, I am. Is it right now? I think that's how we start. We greet at the beginning. Okay, okay. So the word of the day today comes from pretty much like it's called, it's like the the Hmong Chinese, I would say it was a province. Kind Hmong of, language, right? The, it's the Hmong language. It's, uh, it is uh, in a Chinese province probably and or Vietnam. This is what it's Yeah, like. Yeah. So it originated apparently from, for 4,000 years from in China and then in the early 1800s, I read that it, yeah. They migrated. So originally it came from China with over 4,000 years of history. Some Hung left China to go to Vietnam and Laos, Thailand, and Burma, beginning in the early 1800s as a result of land expansion by the Chinese government. Yeah. So So the, the way we say it, oh my gosh, it just flew out my brain. It's... um. Oh gosh, where let me look at the word because I'm looking at the description. Do you remember how it's how it went? It's Hyung. Oh, Hyung. Zong. Zong. Sorry. No, uh, it's uh, here. Hold on a second. Because I read the description. Normally, I have it on my phone right. and I can see the word and the description. All right, we're gonna we're gonna play the YouTube version of it and then we can copy it together. Right. So it doesn't sound like word like. Right. Making. Yeah. Niao Zhong. It's like they're singing. Because when you yeah. hear it, it's like that, and I, we didn't want to like be yeah, like Zhong, because it's a transliteration. It's interesting, you know. On the when I looked up the transliteration for it, it spelled it N Y O B, zoo, mm-hmm. right? So if we were, it would we would think it would say Nyab Zoo. Well, yeah, that's what we right? first thought. So then we looked it up, and, and so it's I like, wanted to. I was like, Niao let me hear Zhong. it. Nyao Zhong. Nyao Zhong. Let's see. Niao Zhong. Niao Zhong. Yeah. Hello. So you'd be walking down. You'd be like, Niao Zhong. Niao Zhong to you. Yeah. But I don't think they'd say to you after. No, no, they'd no. Be like, no. They'd go like all the way and yeah. keep talking. And it'd be like quiet. It's like a One song. thing I've noticed about, at least in my experience, um, when I'm listening to people speak some sort of like a, an Asian language or. An Eastern language an Eastern, in general. Yeah. Um, they speak quietly. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like they're singing, but they it's they speak real quietly. But everybody, like everyone who speaks that language, can hear each other. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when we're speaking English, we like have to yell at each other you know, at all times in order for us to hear each other. You know, back in uh, when we lived in in Napa, uh, it was our first ministry position. But I I took a community college course on to t- to learn Italian, uh-huh. but I didn't finish it because we moved, um, we left. Um, but uh, I remember the teacher, because my dad didn't teach me Italian. It's not my fault. Children can't teach themselves languages that, that aren't spoken in the home. People judge me. Other Italians well, he, judge me. Italians at the time they, wanted everybody to melt into the melting pot. They, so they yeah. weren't being like, we're Italians. Yeah, they so were like, change your I'm name. I'm on the defense of a little bit English here. Speak English only. They judge me because I don't speak Italian. I'm full-blooded Italian. You know, all of my ancestors come from Italy and I don't speak Italian. What's the matter with you? You don't speak Italian. And then they'll say it in Italian. I'm like, I, I don't know what you just said. And your father spoke English with such a strong accent. A lot of times people thought he was still speaking Italian. Yeah, well, that was if I, uh, that was at our wedding. Yeah. He did a whole portion of... Uh, it was like was a talking. sermon. He did the sermon part. Yeah, and then people afterward, they were like, oh, your wedding was so beautiful. There was there was Hebrew and Greek, Greek and Italian. Your father and, spoke and his, and his teaching and or his, his little sermon thing in Italian, and we're like, <laughs> like no, no, he didn't. I don't Not really. So when I was, in a, when I was um, uh, taking this community college course, one of the things that the lady was teaching us was that in Italian, for instance, when you speak, everything is you speak with like – open big vowels like and you, and you like have to move your body yeah, right it's all very it's, so you say because when you said it's like blah, rah, and so, rah. like for instance our last name is when you have like a double t it's not just it's it makes the t like a hard emphatic t like panzetta yeah you right and so like that's why pizza you know pizza yeah that's yeah. how everybody says it too pizza but that's how you, <laughs> that's how no, we go pizza, but yeah, we say panzetta, pizza. Uh-huh. but it's panzetta. That's yes. the way you would say it in uh-huh. Italian. So, But other languages, so then she talked about how English, 
in British, they keep you can talk, you can say everything with your teeth together. Yeah, but we don't speak British English. But, we speak American but that, English. Right, but it's a derivative of that. So that you'll you'll hear. So is that why we yell? So that's why when Italians are speaking English, people uh, uh, will like if if you're gonna speak, if you're gonna say things pretending you're an Italian, you stick an O at the end of every sentence. Sure. You know, and and or because an a. yeah, but but they'll be like. Uh, yeah, I like the meatball. La. Yeah, yeah, so the A's. The is... la, yeah, that, that's a vowel, and it has the ah uh, uh, sound, yeah. not the o oh sound. Yeah, but, okay, but like, <laughs> no, but, but, but people will like, uh, comprendo, even though it's comprende. Uh -huh. Anyway. Well, when don't... you're speaking Greek, so in Italian, you have to like, you're moving your whole self into it, and it's very passionate when you're talking, you're like, you know, pizza and pizza. Well, in Greek, when you're speaking Greek, it's not like you're moving your whole body. It's just like you're really angry. And so you're yelling at each other. Just angry. irritated. Just, you're like, yeah, and I'm not going to speak Greek right now because I totally butcher it because I'd be nervous. But when you're speaking, that's why when we were, we went to Greece and my grandmother went with us and my grandmother's like all like white American. There's, yeah. she's English, English. Welsh background. Yeah, she's English. With she's English well. manners. Yes, that's how come I know We etiquette. don't eat off each other. I know. That's how and come I, I don't. Know We're big, big mouth Italians could, eating the meatballs. Yeah, well, I could sit with the queen, okay? <laughs> I could sit with the queen or the king now. Anyway, so when she went with us, I remember we were sitting in the car. My uncle came and picked us up from the airport because um, so much of my family still lives there. And we're in the car, and my mom's in the passenger seat, and my uncle's driving, which, by the way, in Greece, if you're going to go through an intersection or you're going to go through it, like, you have to honk your horn yeah. because people, like, just go so fast, and it's so insane. It's really dangerous. I think a lot of non-American countries drive. Yeah, yeah. I think way. when we were in Israel, it was, like, pretty – it was, like, death-defying. But so, anyway, so we were in the car, and my grandmother looks at me, and she's like, why are they fighting? And I said, they're not fighting, Grandma. They're just, that's how they talk. They're speaking in Greek. And she was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> she was so gracious and, and calm about it. She's like, why are they fighting? Yeah. You know, that was the English grandmother that yeah, I had. So, yeah, no, the, the, it's, so the cultural I don't difference. think I ever heard my grandmother raise her voice, actually, now that I think about it. I don't think ever in my life. Even when she was very angry, she'd just be like, well. Like, yeah. that's as far as it would get. Right. And that, I mean, that's how we are. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah that how... totally describes who we are. Yeah. Absolutely. Everybody's always like, do you actually even feel anything? <laughs> yeah. Do you guys talk? Yeah. I'm surprised at how many people don't talk. And then I'm shocked at how much we talk in comparison. So when people are like, you guys talk a lot. I'm like, I mean, not like necessarily even with like just we engage, we talk. And for me, it's normal. Like, yeah, but all our children do too. And I find them exhausting. So I can see how people might find us exhausting. Because I'm uh, like, okay, guys, yeah, okay, okay. And they're so intense and like, no, mom, so let's talk about this right now. And I'm like, okay. And all I can think inside my head is this is good. They're yeah, communicating. They, they want to talk. Rivka, hold it together. Yeah. Hold it together. Yeah, but they'll, they'll talk with that passion about Everything. The most. Yeah. Remember, I said the lot a few podcasts ago. I talked about. I right. talked about the silverware. I mean, they argue about everything to the point we had our family night this week, and it's okay. It's they not, don't Antonio see it as says arguing. It's not arguing. If you were to overhear it, but again, you people would feel used like to think you arguing. and I were arguing, and we were they and, no, I know, and we weren't arguing. I know, I know, I know. But like you know, you are who you are, right? And so the introvert in me, I'm getting older. I'm tired. So my kids, there's a lot of them, my kids begin to engage in this way. And our last family night, I was just like, yeah, no, we're not having this conversation. And Rivka's like, no, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm like, no, 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 no. I was really nice about it. I was like, no, 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 it's okay. We're not having this conversation. Nope, we're not going to talk about this. And Antonio's like, okay, I mean, I, mom, I was just saying, like, they felt like they were in trouble. But I was like, no, 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 it's fine. It's all fine. We're not talking about this right what? now. And they're we like, don't shut okay. down dialogue. I was just tired. <laughs> <laughs> it was just over. Norm so, so when we pick whatever movie we're going to watch for family night, we have a spinner wheel. Right. Well, everybody's name is And so Cassini's, Cassini's movie hadn't been picked for months. For months. And so. And I so, decided we were going to watch our movie. Yeah. yeah, that's right. You have to use the microphone if you're going to talk. So Antonio asked my idea that she watched them that she picked the movie. Ah, right. And then 
Rifkula asked, why did she get to pick the movie? And I answered, and you, I felt scolded that I was saying, no, I... No, <laughs> because she came into my... First, she called me on the phone to question me, like, why why does she get yeah. to pick the movie? We use the spinner wheel. Why is, like, like why is this injustice taking place? Sure. Right? And I'm like, okay, no. And I was really nice. I was just like, yeah, no, it's okay. We're just going to let her do this this time. So then so then she came in person. And yeah. I'm like, no, no, it's okay. Like, you're going to be fine, Rev. You're going to be fine. Just wait. Like, it's going to be okay yeah. today. Yeah. And then she we brought a kit brought up again in the kitchen. And I was just like, we're not doing this. No. Yeah. No, no, no. No, because yeah. she wants to go through like the principles of sticking with the rules and I'm like you know what I'm the mom I make the rules right. and I'm changing it today I'm making well, an you exception make an exception of kindness and you're not being hurt in it because it's yeah. anyway <laughs> it's, All not right. that, it's not that she felt like she was being hurt no. for her it's truly it's about the principle. the principle of the matter wait a second yes yeah no, 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 I, uh, and I get that I, I get where she gets that I do too and I love her passion I really do I just sometimes really feel sorry for my mom when I was a teenager because now I get it (laughs) (laughs) I get it it's a lot I mean I think she's amazing I think all my kids are amazing but the passion is a lot yeah I don't have the energy anymore yeah all right well let's let's hear some clickety clack from the spinner wheel spin all right um, the question is, <laughs> what is a home project, craft, or hobby that didn't go well? So, I don't know who asked this question, <laughs> but I feel like people are trying to cause a fight. It feels a little antagonistic, doesn't it? <laughs> Dad is I... tense and uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think he's wondering if I asked the question. I did not put this question in there. I don't put questions in there. I don't know who all, asked this all question. Of, all of them? What? All of them? All of them what, what? what? Talk about one that you won't get angry about. Oh, man. I won't get angry about No, you. I'm not talking about you <laughs> getting angry. About. Of course you don't get angry about any of them. Uh, what's, oh, uh, man. What is one home cra- home project, craft, or hobby? So you could talk about a craft or a hobby. You don't have to talk about a home project. That, but wasn't finished. That didn't go. Uh, that oh, didn't that go didn't so go well. well. So you can talk about a craft that didn't go so well. well. You can talk about a hobby that didn't go so well. Like what is something like you're like I want to get into this, and then you just didn't. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I would say, I would say the garden boxes. <laughs> I used the garden boxes. I did. She did. We Ask had, Elizabeth. We had, no, no, no. I we remember. Had we had a whole co-op. Whole tomato, I we, we did an I entire was, season. I was watering them and everything. Yeah, we did. All, so you can't say I didn't use the garden boxes just because I didn't use them the next season. Right. It was just. And yeah. then they began to fall apart. Right. Yeah. It was just a lot of money for a handful of tomatoes. It wasn't a handful of tomatoes. There was a lot of tomatoes. There was a lot of tomatoes. But they were expensive tomatoes when it was all done. <laughs> but it wasn't just tomatoes. And you had no, it, no, there were no cucumbers. See, that's how much you don't know about there was the zucchini garden boxes. Or whatever. They're zucchini, right? Yeah, they so there was the zucchini. Same. There was tomatoes. There was all kinds of leafy herbs. vegetables. There was all kinds of herbs. All of that. It's not my fault that in Missouri I could grow anything. And here, I worked so hard, Mm -hmm. and I couldn't get them to, I mean, we had one season, and you were like, yeah, I was out there every day, because it doesn't rain here. It was really, 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 really hard. Mm -hmm. So the next season, I don't remember what was going on in October, because that's the planting season for Arizona, and my brain is still, it's the high holidays, it's all of that. And my brain, for whatever reason, can't seem to get out of you plant in the spring. Right. So every time the fall comes, I'm like, oh no! Yeah, here, we're supposed you, to plant here. If you plant in the spring here. You get die. ready for everything. Everything's to gonna burn die up in the sun. Well, we this are, year, literally this year, like bushes are burning. Yeah, like so. Like they've turned to brown from the heat. Right. No matter how much we watered our plants this year, especially in the front, and we don't water it during the day, right? You water it at night. Yeah. And stuff, but the leaves, like I have rose bushes. The, the They're dirt, scorched. well, the dirt, I went over to the rose bushes and the planters and the dirt is wet because they're getting yeah. watered, but they're completely dead because the sun is just fried yeah. everything. It's yeah. impossible to keep I don't, things alive. I don't think in June or July and like for the first half of August, we got any rain. I mean, zero. None. None. It didn't and rain it was time. over a hundred. Like mom's and... June season came and went without and it was like, any rain. I think rain. we had one small rain. It was, and that was like 110 last... degrees for 31 consecutive no. days. 
degrees. It was over 110 That's what I mean. degrees. It was 110 uh, yeah, or for above. 31 days. For 31 for days. For 31 so days. Everything died. So it was like 118, 116. And we were. The previous sw- record had w- been 20 days. I know. I was really excited about swimming every day. So we had gone out and we were swimming in our pool every day. And I was getting a lot of vitamin but D. But the I was water really- wasn't refreshing. I'm not interrupting. I'm. Okay. He's interjecting. Okay. So we would go out and we would lay out and stuff. And then it got too hot to be even. To, to a, to even be able to go outside. Yeah. It, the, and the water yeah. in the pool got over a hundred degrees, and so yeah. the kids didn't find it refreshing. It was like a bath water. Yeah, I liked it because we don't have any humidity in our air, so it's cold a lot. Yeah. Like if you get out of the pool, you're freezing. Even if it's 120 degrees, you're freezing because the air is so dry and it hits against you being Yeah, you're wet freezing it, for like a moment and then the wind blows and you're dry as a bone. Yeah, but I don't like that initial freezing <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, that initial freezing. So I, would, so I would lay out on my like like floaty thing and, um, and I just had my hands in the water and I just laid out and it was nice. But you can't when there's no cloud coverage and it's like 116 degrees, it's, it's too hot. So there was like a few weeks there that we the kids couldn't swim we couldn't swim nothing and everything died outside yeah yeah i feel like i feel so like question, i feel again. like the question's really a negative question all right i feel like you, we should talk about the things that have gone well well i can, I can i can pick i can a, this person has <laughs> asked other questions so i can pick a different question okay because like it's not that it's a hard question to answer i think it's probably one of the easiest questions that's ever been asked there's, there's so why many don't you go ahead there's so many options there's like the bathroom that's <laughs> let's still... walk through the house and let's see what things are unfinished right. like everything yeah there's a bathroom that's unfinished. there's two bathrooms three bathrooms what no the well oh hmm. <laughs> <laughs> See, we should go to a different well, question. Well, the the okay. Well, hold on a second. So, so well, one of the bathrooms is finished. I mean, I have to fix a little thing under the sink. No, the baseboard. There, the better baseboard needs to be put in on the floor, and the sink, <laughs> it, the the faucet, is not sealed onto the countertop and so uh-huh. every time the kids use it, it jiggles and it wiggles, mm-hmm. and then the water, if it gets yeah. out, goes I, down I said, into the. The thing. I suggested we pivot to another question, <laughs> so. and you started volunteering. Well, I know, but I, he was going to do it, and then I, you, okay, and that's fine. I, you feel obligated to well, the do, ask the I question. I do. Because, well, first of all, what I did is I picked on one of Mom's projects, and that sure. when the vast majority, I picked on the garden boxes, which is sure. the one thing is, that I did finish and I did use. I just didn't repeatedly use it year after year after year. Yeah, but you finished it the way that I finished that bathroom, guys. Can we move to another question? <laughs> but the other bathrooms I haven't finished. I love you. All right. Everyone's enjoying this. Um, <laughs> all right. Tony is uncomfortable. All right. <laughs> Wait, this, is, this is just talking. All right. Um, that, was, that, was that Lauren? Was that Lauren? Yeah. Lauren's picking a fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think Lauren, Lauren knows. Mike Lauren came over knows. to help me with that bathroom, and Mike did the vast majority of the work in the second bathroom. And I've just had a little bit to do. I think Lauren aftermath. loves me. I think uh-huh. she's my friend and she uh-huh. loves me. And she's like, hey, dude, you got to finish the That's project. so passive aggressive. <laughs> no, I don't think it was passive at all. <laughs> so, but I, but I, listen, can I, can I just say something on my. Okay. It's not ahead. like, hold on, hold on. I, it's not like you're the only guy that does this. But. Because. All this is like this is not an, an uncommon theme within homes unless guys unless you have that guy that's like I love working on my house so and doing projects that's and not, finishing them. That's not me, but I and 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 I actually um, would rend- deem myself not a handyman in any way. You're not a handyman by heart, but you can do anything. No, yeah, you can. I can, but some guys do it way better than me. <laughs> Um, but I have done some really cool things, like I built that the fireplace, mm-hmm. the faux fireplace. Yeah, you have built, yeah, built, built built-in shelves. I, you have built, built regular the shelves. Foot table. You built a you kitchen you dining room table. Room we were I you changed chandeliers. Yeah, it's not about and the, the and, and the thing is, I don't think. I mean, I like growing up. I like. I didn't observe any of this kind of stuff. No, your dad didn't do anything. He taught me to build. We built a birdhouse together outside. <laughs> Yeah, and everything that else you was, did begrudgingly. Every, yeah, you did, did not want to do that. I did not everything want to do that. Everything else your dad did was 
I, I know a guy that'll get me a good deal. Well, no, well, no, my dad. They, they lived at the prison. Yeah. yeah, they did live at the prison. That's and true. so prisoners would mow our lawn, mow their lawns, yeah. and would do all that they kind of do. stuff. The so, thing that I, when we first lived there, uh, uh-huh. my dad, uh, he did a garden in the backyard. Oh yeah, yeah. And it was a big vegetable garden, mm. and we had cucumbers and zucchini. Florida and rains a lot. Florida you rains all. Plenty of rain. You hated it. Didn't I you? hated it yeah. so. What kind of an Italian much. are you? Like I, Greeks, I, we have gardens. I want a garden. So yeah, badly. we have gardens and we have lemon trees and we like you go into okay, my. You, you know go what? Into, you on, know what Greeks on. do? Greeks eat fish. What kind of Greek are you? <laughs> okay, what kind of Greek are you that you don't eat fish? <laughs> let's move on. So, <laughs> so I did not like the feeling. Of the, the texture of the dirt on it my, rem- the way it would dry out my fingertips me. and get under my fingernails. I hated it so it rem- much. It reminds me of a couple years ago when there were a bunch of sticks in one of the planters or whatever, and y- y- we were having to get them out. <clears throat> so we had gloves on, and Giovanni's wearing gloves, but he doesn't want to pick up any of the sticks. He's like 21. He doesn't want to pick up <laughs> any of the sticks. And so he has gloves on, and he has a shovel, and he's taking one stick at a time and dropping it in the grass rather than grabbing a bunch of sticks at a time to he's do it he's picking back. up one stick, one stick How big with are these a shovel cuz he was he was he was using a shovel was he afraid of spiders cuz i know he's yes, really he was afraid, afraid of spiders, spiders. it's That's exactly it. what he was, it was so scared he there had were gloves spiders. on but he was still too afraid so he yeah it was uh it got full i don't know what happened it was like full of like 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 a branch. You know what probably happened? What? Probably when the landscapers came. Yeah. They picked up all the sticks in the yard and they put them there and forgot to take them to the truck. Maybe. Something. Anyway, so so yes, I did not like working the garden, but my dad loved it. But we never did any kind of um, you know, household chores or, or anything. No, projects like changing yeah. A, yeah, and if we painted, he would be like, "I have some friends that can help with that." Exactly. Right. That's what I, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so let's go to the other All right, question. let's do another question with Thanks a, a lot. The Lauren. same <laughs> the same <laughs> you can ask from the same individual. All right, let me find um so not nice. <laughs> Man. Okay, so we'll do we'll do this one. Um how do you show your spouse love in a way that they feel slash receive it? Oh, man. <laughs> How do you show your spouse love in a what? In, in a, a way. way they feel slash receive it. Feel slash receive it. Yeah. How do you show love? So how do you and how should you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Go ahead. You you go I'll f- let you answer that. Oh, ladies Well, first. you both have to answer the question. <laughs> So how do you – okay, ask me the question again because I keep forgetting it. it how just, do you show your spouse love in a way they love? feel slash in receive way it? They, that makes them feel loved and they receive yeah, it. Right. So throughout the 26 years we've been married – Almost. Almost 26 years. We've been together for 26 years. Mm-hmm. Um, if there's anything that he – with the exception of one thing, but if there's anything that he has um, asked – or in ministry, if some, if there's like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Or I need help with this. Or like when the, I didn't necessarily want to do the children's ministry, but we needed someone to do the children's ministry, so I stepped in there. Anything he's ever needed to have done, or asked to have done, or anything like that, I have done like immediately. I, I think by nature I'm a procrastinator, um, and so because I know that about myself. I will do something it like immediately or think about it way far in advance and try and get as much done as possible because I know that naturally I'm a procrastinator so I intentionally get it done. So I've I've done all that um, over the years and uh, cuz your your love language is acts of service. Yeah. So I've tried to do acts of service with the exception and I will, you know, I will admit to this, I'm terrible at taking folded clothes out of the laundry basket and putting them away. Like that was a huge point of contention between the two of us our I'm, early I'm, years in I'm marriage. I'm really bad at that too. What? I'm really bad at that. Yeah. Like I'll get I'll everything else done, wash it, basket. fold it, everything, but once it's in that basket, it's like there's like like a surrounding boundary around it. It's like a superpower that laundry has and it's like you can't touch me. It's like And me. I'm like I can't do it. It's like do me it. in that bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel did like a lot of it. 
and then just didn't yeah. finish. Yeah, I so like I don't finish that. Finished project. Yeah, I feel like there was a full year I just literally lived out of a laundry basket. <laughs> oh gosh, that's uh, yeah, terrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, I I mean, look, the ten my. Oh, and I'm terrible at unpacking suitcases. Oh, oh, oh you are. You are <laughs> so bad at that. <laughs> oh, 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 like I okay, so I I unpack a suitcase. Immediately. Immediately, we get. I mean, any I get, place. even if I go to a hotel, I put take my suit. I take the clothes out and put them in a drawer, unless yeah. we're just staying overnight. Right. But if we're staying for a couple of days, no, we can almost stay overnight. And I'm like, why are you taking your stuff out and putting them in a drawer? And you're like, it's just nice. It's just they're they're organized. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so <laughs> we will go from like we used to go away quarterly, mm-hmm. and and there were times when the when the the suitcase stayed there from one quarterly trip to another <laughs> like where we because we go I'm away just to terrible at unpacking I and, don't and, know and why when she would see me it, when we would get home and I would start to unpack mine it would give she, me anxiety it would start to stress her it out, has like. to be an ADD thing <laughs> it has to be something with my ADHD where I'm just like I don't know but like unpacking and putting it away for whatever reason I just don't uh, get know, to if I would say uh, here, here's what I the reason, and I, I just want to say, you've never actually said, Rifka, can you please unpack your suitcase? That's correct. I don't so, do so, that. I yeah. leave that. I don't. I don't do right. That. And I'm saying, I though, think, look, you've asked me to do things, and I do them, but you've never asked I, me to. I think that er, should just be a given. Probably, I, but to though. be honest, to be honest, I, I think early in, because we are neat and sloppy in different ways, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And early in our marriage. It was. It became a source. You were of, neat, and I was sloppy. Yes, and it became a source of, <laughs> of great conflict. And I was a. I was a more than a little condescending and yeah. irritating. Yeah. Yeah. Should it. I tell the? To, should I tell the story? No. We were in our. What? Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. It's fine. We're in our first apartment. Oh, it was condo. such an arrogant. What was it? Was it? What was it? It was like. It was a. It was a, condominium. That had a it was just like, one. It was it was real narrow. Well, right. It was, but it, what I mean is like it was one building that was one level, and it went uh, and there was it looked like one of those outdoor hotels. It was a, no, but it was, it was it was two. We we were two stories. Oh, that's right. We were two. We stories. were two stories because we had a, a loft, right. but it was all it was open. Yeah. So you would walk in. It kind of looked like row houses. Yes. Um, but it was a condo, and you would walk. It in. It was really cute, and it was narrow. I mean, for our living room was maybe maybe this like maybe 10 feet i don't even think it was this um way. and uh anyway so so I, I was 22 and i had i had a certain um i had a certain philosophy well, you were 22 and you practically you were the neatest person in your home and your stuff was always neat and organized like Raphael. Raphael's like that mm-hmm. and you didn't have any other siblings your sister got married and left you had your own room right so i very- i mean i had a sibling maria yeah, no, 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 no. Like she got married, but what I'm saying is that conflict, like where our kids shared rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was like massive mess from. Two yeah, my room engaging. was either my mess or not my mess. Right. And even in college, I only had a roommate my first year because I was an RA my next two years, and and my roommate my freshman year, he was a slob, mm-hmm. and so I said to him, I was like, Tony, um, I'm just telling you, I can't live with it, <laughs> so. I'm if gonna, you're okay if with you, it. I, well, I didn't even say that. I wasn't that thoughtful, or or I was just like, if I'm not angry, but if like if you leave a mess, I'm gonna clean it up. Mm-hmm. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna put the clothes back in the closet. I'm gonna make your bed if you don't make it because I can't look right. at it. My poor roommate. Because it was my one room. My poor roommate in college, Julie. She was such a great girl. Man, she was smart. She dressed amazing. She did her hair so perfect. Like, I could sit and watch her, and she would get it and spray it, and it would be perfect. Her nails were perfect. Her makeup was perfect. She was a neat, orderly person, and they put her with me. Mm-hmm. With me. I feel so sorry for That's, her. And when we did a pre-college checklist uh-huh yeah i put that i was very neat right that i wanted you to be with to, someone that was you have to answer all those neat. questions and uh so they they and, put uh, and tony with me. was not very neat yeah. i loved him though he's a good guy but um but but anyway so i you're, you're right i hadn't I'm a had good to person, even though you're I'm amazing like that. yeah 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 and that's <laughs> i love you so this is well part of the thing is this is why through the year it was such oh a but point. i didn't finish my story yeah 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 Go ahead. Yeah, you trying to skip over? No, it. I was, we can go to. It. Okay, so anyways, I, I can tell it exactly. So I had how it. I, I was really ill in the beginning of our marriage. Yeah. I had had um, yeah an allergic reaction to, to some, some medication, and I was very very ill the first few months. 
And um, but I would get home and I would take my you know pants off, whatever, and I would as we drop do, them where you stood. I didn't drop them where I stood. There was a chair. There was a chair. Come on. What in the world? There was a chair next I to the closet. I don't know this story. Okay, there was a chair next to the closet, and I would put my stuff on that chair. I just that's just what I did, and it was driving Dad crazy. It was dri- driving Cosmo crazy, and he didn't actually just. voice it. He didn't say, "Hey, Riv." Hey, Cosmo, just yeah. calm down. No, I was he, just mentally he, going back there. I know, he's like going back. Sense. So he didn't say to me, hey, it kind of affects me when we have like clothes out. Can you put them away or anything like that? He just came upstairs one day. I'm upstairs. He's not communicated. And let me just preface this with, we did five months of premarital counseling and it was really intense. And we were taught how to communicate. Mm, okay. Okay. So he wasn't communicating that all of this was bothering him. And so he sits there. My jeans are on the chair. I'm sitting on the bed. And he looks at me and he's like, hey, Riv. And I'm like, yeah. And he picks up my pants and he goes, these are your pants. Here is the chair. Here is the closet. You can take your pants and hang them in the closet. And I remember sitting there, and it was already like there had been so many things that he was like that with me about. That's such a jerky thing. I know. So many things. And I sat there, and I felt like every day I was in trouble. Every day I was doing something that wasn't correct for the great Cosmo Panzetta. And I remember that triggered in me a moment of, and I said to you, you know, so I know marriage is about compromise, and I'm all about compromise, but I feel like I'm doing a lot of compromising and and doing what you need and I don't feel like you're compromising at all because every little thing like that because you were like no I want it like this and you felt like you were right and if yeah, everybody no, did it a, your way everybody would be happy this is what again this is what your brother used to refer to me where he'd As go your, he'd go oh there you go uh, Cosmo being all lovable, lovable again, again. <laughs> <laughs> and my arrogance or my or that kind of like when I when I think about it now I want to smack me right yeah, uh, yeah but because I had this mentality my self esteem was so low though that so, was the best I could come back with because I so, felt like okay so my strategy so from about the time I was eight years old like my room had been messy when I was little little and my mom would clean up my room or whatever but from about the time I was eight I always kept a clean room and and I just discovered because because all of a sudden it hit me one time I was working cleaning up a disastrous room and it took like a whole day and i was like and i and i realized that when i would when i would come home from school or whatever when i would change my clothes that if i would put them in one of three places you know either they either go in the closet they go in the hamper they go in my drawers and if i would just do that if i would take that two minutes to do that then my room never piled up with a mess. And I never had that all day mess. My room was always a haven. It was always a, a clean, straight place. And so um, and so I sort of had this mentality, this like, like when I take my clothes off, there's one of three places it can go. Drawers, closet, hamper. That's it. Done. And I can relax. So to me, not moving it. You see it, Nike's like that. Yeah. So for to me... I didn't understand, but I didn't communicate. And that was the thing. And I didn't communicate with kindness. And I didn't communicate with grace. I communicated with irritation and, and condescension. And condescension. Right. And so, which was so fun. And so, um, so through the years, because that was such a source of um, conflict for us early on, and not the, the, it, the issue wasn't as much the messiness as much as my re, reaction to and reply to it respond to it so through the years i um i that that became something that i like so when you're like so when you say you didn't say anything about the the suitcase mm-hmm. i laid that down a long time ago i was not going to i would actually and, and because not no you've actually unpacked i'll unpack it and before. not in a way that like out of irritation no like I, it does it no longer long ago does it get under my skin um yeah i think we kind of flip-flopped because in the beginning everything i did not that everything you do but everything i did yeah um you found irritating yeah, and yeah, frustrating yeah. like i used to be like i don't know that you like me do you like me yeah. like i know you're like i love you i'm like no i know you love me but i don't know if you like me um yeah. but um 
But yeah, but everything back then used to uh, annoy you about me. And then as we were going through the years, the kind of thing is leveled out. And then I think I had some sort of awakening in my 30s, and then you started getting on my nerves. I was nerves. getting in trouble for everything. <laughs> All of a sudden, I was like, when did this happen? <laughs> um, it's like, because I was still... I, I think she was growing. I think I, I grew up yeah. and you stayed the same, um, you the, know? So, so, but in general, what I would say, cause we haven't even really answered the question. Yeah, we need um, to. But I, what I would say is this, <laughs> is that even in, and I can only speak specifically to us, um, is that Rivka is a, uh, she tends to be someone who is naturally thoughtful and insightful. And so she sees you, not not as herself, but she sees you for who you are, and she will then seek to, um, to do things for you that would min- bless you or minister right, to it, you. Right. My tendencies, my natural tendencies, and I think we, you know, we've told stories about my. I gift think probably giving, most people are this way. But my natural tendencies uh, are to think if I like it, you'll like it. If this is how I feel loved, why wouldn't anyone feel loved this way? And so the way I most naturally express and feel loved is through acts of service. And so when the house was messy and things like that, I felt it it it, it bothered me. You know, those were things but I had But the house to... didn't get messy, messy, messy until we had two children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I kind yeah. of I say like before before when they were Anto- toddlers. When Antonio or when Giovanni was born, I was texting um, Kelly about this the other day. When Giovanni was born, I made sure he had a bath every single night. Every time we had anyone in the house that visited, I made sure I cleaned the bathrooms if they used the bathrooms to make sure everything was clean. There was never dust. Giovanni had a bath every single night. We had a night routine. I gave him Mm -hmm. a massage every night, and he never in any one week wore the same pajamas or the same outfit. And he had pajamas on when he went to bed every single night. And then Antonio was born, and they got baths like every other day, and I was able to stick up with that or stick with that. Then we moved from Napa Mm -hmm. to Missouri, and I've never recovered. Yeah. So <laughs> it's I. Just so, been so, a can't we get, so when, when you're saying when I was born and we got baths every other day, you're talking about the first two months of my life, and then after that, I didn't get a bath. No, you every still other day? no, you still got baths every other day. But what I mean is like I was, the baths went to every other day because I was taking care of a newborn okay. and a two year old, and sure. then but my house was still immaculately. I mean, it was spotless, the bedrooms, everything. Um, and then when we moved, you know, you have to like unpack and the house was bigger and we had all these, it was yeah. just, I, ne- I, I never yeah. recovered. And then we started having more children. And so, yeah. Yeah. I would say, so, so generally in those rare moments, like one of the things that Rivka does, and I think Antonio's gotten this from his mother is that she's an incredible gift giver and she's, that's probably my love gift- language. It is definitely your love gift language. Gift giving is my love and, language. And, yeah. and, um, and so Rivka will give you the gifts that you didn't even know you wanted, but you're like, you're like, oh my gosh, this is exactly, like it's like she knew me better than I knew me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that still stands true. <laughs> knows me better than I, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And there have been a handful of times where I have, when I have it, where when I have done something for her that was solely for her where I wasn't also alternatively benefiting from it. So for instance, I think so, so oh, wait, let me say real quick. So I could say, look, and this, and let me say, I did say, you know, um, look, look at all I do for you. I wash the dishes, I clean this, I do the laundry, I'll help with this, and then you should, of course you should feel loved, you know, blah, 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 blah. Because she goes, sometimes I feel like you don't love me. And I'd be like, what's that? And, and, and how do you make someone feel loved? You say, you get you're really crazy. Defensive. Get, get you defensive. You tell them they're ridiculous. What kind of craziness is that? Of course I love you. You know, yeah. uh, that's, that's great. Super and so, and so, um, uh, but, but, but the reality is, and, and she would point this out, I don't do those things solely sacrificially because uh, I love her. I do those things because too because I you, love me too. Because well, I no, want... you were doing the things that were important to you. Correct. Because I would say to him, but you're not actually doing what I've asked you to do. I'm asking you to help me, but you would say I help you all the time. But you're only doing the things that matter that, to you. That I value. so if there were dishes in the sink, you did the dishes. If there, I there was hate laundry, dishes in the sink, and if there was laundry that needed to be put away, you'd put away the laundry. But the stuff I literally asked you to do, you actually wouldn't do. Correct. And so it's a it's a blind spot that it's a lie you tell yourself. 
that I told myself, like, I love you, look at all I do for you, but in, but the heart is deceitful above all things. And so the deceitful heart was actually doing the things that I valued, right. not sacrificially. <clears throat> so on the occasions when it you when you felt actually seen and I was going to say, that's the thing. It's and, about feeling and seen. so that she would say things to me. I would like, say, like, I feel like I'm invisible. I wish, I wish you would give me, <laughs> like, I like I love little gifts. It didn't mean she wanted big, exp- of course she loves jewelry, but it didn't mean she needed a big expensive yeah. jewelry. She wanted to know that she was thought of and loved. And she was like, you could even buy me, like, a pen. That was well, always no, the example. You would of sit there, because well, you'd look at me, like, every time we had this discussion. And you would go, I don't know what you want me to do. Like, what do you want me to buy you? And I would say, I just, like, I don't know, something that says you're thinking of me, even if it's a pen. Like, I like writing letters at the time. I was like, I like writing letters to my friends and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, like buy me a pen and say, here's this really nice pen I found and I thought of you because you like to write letters. I'm like, something small like that that just says, hey, I was thinking about you and I know that you right. like this. So in moments when I would take the initiative and get it right. Now, she does, she recognizes when I do things you know, for her where I get, you know, but they're, they're not things that are terribly painful for me to do. I'll go, you know, if she no, asked me to do something, up, I'll go do so. I'll go get your coffee. I'll do this. Oh yeah. But that, those yeah. Things. Those are things that you, you love doing. Like even if I didn't ask for coffee, you'd still bring That's me That's what coffee. I naturally do. This right. is the That's way, an act of service. That's the way I love like right. naturally and you're really good at loving me with your love language with my love language. yes it's, you're very it's good it's my at most it. natural it's the it's the language unless i speak unless it's projects correct <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> unless it's like stuff that <laughs> overwhelms me and terrifies me the little things that you know that i'm like i don't know how to do that and i procrastinate not, and run and all you got to do is learn how to do it you you're do. so smart you're all so you smart do. and and so um so i can remember um I rem- you know, there are a handful of gifts that I've given her through the years. I think, um, I think like three times you've gotten me something that I was like, oh, wow. And that's because you wrote it down on your, your in your phone. What would those three be? <clears throat> well, I, I don't know if the first one, well, I think the first one does. It's when you went and got me the teacup and the teapot. Okay. And the because I yes you we felt talked loved about in that, that before yeah no I still yeah. have that and Pride I tre- and treasure those things right. not just because I love those things but I treasure those things because you got those for me knowing I would like them and I know how much I know how hard that was for you and the handful of times I wrote you I wrote like a a, a poem or something that, that was also, you wrote me poems two. twice yeah right and you've made me two cards when we before we got married <clears throat> ah. that I still have and I when treasure. I was in marketing mode. Those first two weeks, yeah. <laughs> Literally, it's the first two weeks. But, <clears throat> excuse me, but... Um, We're just being real here, folks. <laughs> just being real. Yeah. Um, and there's there's no a, tension or anything like that. We're just no, talking. No, not at all. Um, but uh, the... No, so that was the first time. I'm not trying to portray time. myself as the perfect husband. Right, and I don't think you're the worst husband. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, so, uh, anyway, so then that was the first time. I think the second time... Oh, okay. The second time that I remember, I really, really wanted this um, Victorian coat. This is this is at the top of the list. Okay, and we were we've always had because we've been in ministry, we are not you know overflowing in the money, and we had two, we had the moolah, we had the two little boys, and I had found this Victorian coat that I loved. It was so pretty because we would go. We lived in Kansas City, and we would go to Overland Park. Was it? Was yeah, it, it, was it was over in the Kansas side, yeah. Yeah, it was on the Kansas side in Overland Park, and they had this Victorian store. Victorian and it, Trading Company. Yeah, and it was so nice, and we'd go in there, and in the store, like it was an online store, but you could go in the store, and they had things like wholesale. But they had this like rack of these gorgeous wool long coats that had this really nice like collar that came around that had a really pretty um, brocade on it. And it was so pretty. It but it a, was Antonio, it had a brocade. It had a brocade. Just in case you didn't know. <laughs> it had a brocade. Just I to think bring, the people just to that bring, it matters to will know what to that bring is. Clarity. Um <laughs> I think that it I think Go ahead, know. beautiful. Anyways, so um it was so pretty and I wanted it so badly. But we were really I mean, we had no extra money. Right. Well, we, I was working at Singular at the time, so we were making eighteen. Making tiny Singular, a little bit more. We were, I was leading worship at Jonathan's church, but we were kinda in between right. uh full time ministry positions. So I was working selling phones. So I was making a little bit more money, but it was still You still it, had to make payments on it. I think it you, was no it was three hundred dollars. It was a three hundred dollar coat, right. which felt like a thousand dollars. Three thousand 
dollars. It was it was out of discussion. Like there was just no way. And so I had looked at this and I was like, this is so beautiful, which I still have upstairs in my closet next to all my things because I love it so much. So it was Christmas and I don't even know that I had asked for the coat. You, you, you didn't even imagine to ask for it. Right. So I'm sitting there. It never crossed your mind that it was even on the, the, in the realm of possibility. Of course. Right. And so, especially because you're not a gift giving person. I'd never, I mean, other than the one time before, right? So um, there was this heavy box. And, or well, the, what happened, I did it sort of like Christmas Story with Ralphie. That's right. With, All of, everything was everything done. Everything was done. Everybody. Because I, I remember, I remember I had to, I had to, in the middle of the day, I had to, you know, when you work for, I worked for Singular, I only had a half hour lunch break. So I had to work out with my manager to get an extra period of time. Because I had to go, so I in the middle of the day I took a, a long lunch and and drove down to Overland Park and bought the coat mm-hmm. and like and it was a crazy time you know it's Christmas time yeah crazy time of year and so then I put it and so I wrapped it up and I put it behind it was in a box though it was in a box yeah and I put it yeah because when you get something there they give they you give these, these really boxes, nice right? boxes and so I put sometimes it, I want to get something just, just because to get I the want box. the box like, oh no when we would order stuff from there online. I still have boxes we upstairs still have the right boxes. now. We do. And I put my things in them because they're so, so pretty. So I and I put it behind the green uh, uh, chase mm-hmm. chair, and uh, and so, so we, it was, we were all done. Yeah, and I'm sitting there, and he's like, "Oh, wait a minute!" And he pulls out this big box, and I'm like, "What in the world?" And he puts it on my lap, and it's big, and we have pictures of this. Yeah. I think you were taking pictures. And I un- unwrap it, and I see it's from the Victorian Trading Company. I'm like. What? what is what is this and I open it and it's the coat and I totally cried she cried and, oh my gosh and she doesn't she didn't cry easily no or quickly the, and not in and, not and in this so life. that was I'm a moment a, where she I, I'm felt, not the crier where she felt seen loved and, and and it wasn't about the gift it was about the thoughtfulness yeah. it was about but the sacrifice I love the gift correct yeah but and, but and and so what would it the third time would have been um I'm trying to think I know there's a third. Oh, 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 there was another Christmas. Your parents were visiting. Okay. And I sat there and I said, I used, I said the words. Do you remember this? I said the words. Oh, man. Okay. This was so amazing. Yeah. Because they're so rare and far and few in between. Yeah. Okay. So um, I was sitting there. I've blown it many times. (laughs) So I was sitting there and I was like, you know what would be a great Christmas gift? It'd be a great Christmas gift if you got like the Anne of Green Gables like DVD set or something like that, you know. And it's Christmas morning. It's she's Christmas saying. morning. Yeah. And I and we're all sitting there and I'm like, that would be so great to get. And I don't remember why I said that, but I said that. And when I opened your Christmas gift to me, that's what it that was. That was one of the gifts I had gotten. Yeah. You. Yeah. And I was and like, when oh she my gosh. said it when she said that, I gotta tell you, I like inside, like I'm sitting there knowing that one of those gifts is Anna Green Gables D V D set. And and so I know that I think she's gonna like this. I thought, you know, because I was trying, I was really trying to be thoughtful. What would Rivka like? What would she look? And so I'm looking, and and uh, and then so when you're sitting there, you go, you know what I would like? I, it would be great. I would love to get the Anna Green Gable DVD set. And I know it's wrapped, and I'm like, I've I've won the day, like I've yeah I've conquered the day. <laughs> And you're like, I win but, Christmas. But there was another. I remember. That's what it's about. I, no, but no, no, no. But the sense of. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but, a, you know, the, the yes. sense of like, I have accomplished the thing that I desire to do for you to. Mm-hmm. to cause, because gift giving and gifts yeah. are. Uh, uh, I, I will for, say, I think that was before Rafi was born. Uh, yes, that was we were in Billings. Yes. And it was, but, but yes, it was before. Right. So since then, though. There's not, I don't know. You've gotten. We, we don't need to really focus on that. <laughs> so, so I was just going to say, so that, so people don't think you're like hyper neglectful or anything. Okay. Um, we, since then when Amazon came out and stuff, like everybody has wish lists. Yeah. Our, all our kids do wish lists and I do it like we all do. So we know what each other wants. Hmm. So he will shop off that now, which yeah. makes everything easier for right. you. So yeah, you were happy with things I got you this year and that kind of coach the, the, yeah, yeah. The person. Yeah, yeah. But it was off your wish list. It wasn't, the difference is it wasn't me knowing you. Right. Well. So well, one of the things that I remember, <clears throat> tell me if this hit, because mm-hmm. I remember um, going, stopping at a, like a thrift store. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And I went in and I saw, which we still have, I saw this, uh, this white 
wooden. Yeah, that's what I was just gonna say. Lap desk, and it was. I mean, it must have been twenty bucks or something, but it was really nice. It was. It was old. It was old, it and was I really knew she old. loved these kind. And I thought it was you know, kind of that kind of thing that you would. Um, it was like a bed tray. Yeah, it wasn't a lap desk. Oh right, it was like a bed. a bed tray, and it had these. It was kind of like almost wickery. Yeah, like because it had the spindles, spindles on the spindles sides on the sides and, and, and stuff, and you could put like your book in or whatever. And then the tray could also so, tilt up. Correct. So you could uh, you paint and I on saw it. And I thought, or well, she would love this, and so it was. It was sort of a just because gift. Mm-hmm. Like I got it. Oh, and I still and, have it, and, and it's so old it started it needs falling. Needs to be up. repainted. Well, I painted it several times. It now needs. I need to like clean it, clean it. Yeah. But the spindles have started breaking and falling off because it's been you know so many years. years. So I got all new spindles, and I'm fixing it because it means so much to me. It's not just right. something that I can just like. Oh, this is falling apart and getting right. old. I'm going to get rid of it. Like this was a meaningful, meaningful right. gift. And to so me. you know that I, I I find that for me, and I I think some guys can probably relate to this. And and now and Tony like in. Antonio is like you. Yes. Antonio is a really amazing gift giver. Amazing. Like, I it, love the thoughtfulness that you like. The gifts that he gives are, I'm not to to put more pressure on him for the future, but the gifts that he gives no, are put pressure. Go intentionally, ahead. like they're they're very specific and they're very right. thoughtful. I already I, got mom's Christmas gift. Look at that. Yeah, he's already gotten mine. So, um, um, what was I gonna say? So Antonio usually, normally, probably until he got married would get me like more than one thing. Now he gets me like one thing. And it's still great, it's still fine, but you know, yeah. he's doesn't have he's not like rolling in the dough. He has a wife and all yeah. of that. So he would get me um he got me like things for my kitchen, but he wouldn't just get me this one thing for my kitchen. It was like a set and it would all go together. Yeah. And it was I would it was the best gifts that I would get. And I'm not trying to like put, put my other children yeah, down. Sure. No, I it was love just, everything that I, I think get. He, I think he's uniquely um uh, he just is. We have the same love language, I, so I, he's really good right. at giving me amazing. Yeah, because he and yeah, I, I, I have the same. I enjoy. I really enjoy giving gifts. I'm not great at getting gifts. Yeah, like getting gifts, I feel awkward. Uh, yeah. Well, I would say. So I would say that um, that it's the and sometimes the the thing that can happen is in the in just the pressure of survival. We get burdened down by just trying to make it um and and those moments when we can stop about focusing on survival and be focused on seeing the person that god has given to us and loving them in a way that will make sure they feel loved that's the thing that that Mm -hmm. in in those moments there have been too few and far between for for me for that i mean again i love my wife consistently but not always in a way that she necessarily. I, yeah, but I, it's not intentional. You don't feel unloved, right? <laughs> so, what was the question? Because I feel like we just we no, wander I, off, and I, I don't, don't remember. Like, My well, brain. Just, I mean, you you. What were some times that you something was done for you that? No, maybe, it was it was. How do you show your spouse love oh, yeah, in the way that they uh, feel slash receive it? And I feel like in a way you guys have. Have you that. felt loved for most of our marriage? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, there and there, yeah, there. Are, sure, there are moments where, uh, for both of us, where we were like, I, you know, I where I wanted the you know the laundry put away. Sure. But or you wanted you know, but but those are things where, um, uh, y- yes, I feel I absolutely feel yeah. loved. And, and I, also, honestly, as we've been married, I'm I'm older now. I'm you know I'm middle aged and. There are a lot of those things that eventually don't matter. Like uh-huh. you have a life with this person. Right. And so it's it's when you're young, it's all about, oh, it was so wonderful. We did this. We did that. He got me this. She got me that or blah, 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 all that yeah. stuff. But, you know, you have kids and you have a life and you have a home and you have things that you have to put money towards to fix and all that right. kind of stuff. And so life changes right. to where you, you're not necessarily always looking for those things. So personally... Like a lot of that stuff, because you're you're naturally just not good at I'll, it. I'll tell you the moment I just kind of went, okay, that's I'll, okay. I'll, I'll just tell you the that. moment if there was one moment that um, that I could dr- bring to mind um, that I comes to mind that made me feel most loved in a sacrificial way mm-hmm. was. Um, it was a combination of moments. One of the things, whether you realize or not, Rivka's not uh, shy about saying this, is she always knew 
the Lord had called her into full-time ministry, but she never wanted to be a Rebbitson or in, a pastor's or wife. A pastor's or wife. go into ministry. Well, not in a way that not was... In this way. Not, not, not in this way. Not in that way. Not in yeah. a way that put you in front of people. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't something that was that that was for her. Now, for me, it was it was something that, that was not only the, what I felt the Lord had called me to do, but it was something that I loved. And, um, and so for years we'd been serving in different ways in ministry and, um, but she'd go, I do not want to be a Rebbitson. I do not want to be a Rebbitson. And, uh, well, basically what I meant was I don't want to be a pastor's, pastor's wife. wife. Right. Yeah. So we had actually, um, we had actually come here to surprise to, uh, and I was preaching at a Hispanic. Uh, well, you pa- were working for, well, no, no, no. Oh. I was not yet. It was in 2009, um, I mean, I, I was and I wasn't. I was. Um, oh, right. We'd come here to visit. We'd come here to visit. And I preached at um, Pastor and Sister Martinez's church, Iglesia del Valle, in uh, surprise. And, uh, and when I got done preaching, uh, I sat down, and, or we got in the car, and R- um, Rivka looks at me and she goes, something along the lines of, this is what you were made to do. Well, that's what you heard. What I said was the Lord spoke to me yes. during the service and told me that you were called to preach and that you need to begin preaching. Right. More. Yeah. And uh, and so so then after we had moved here, we were originally doing a lot with Jewish Voice Ministries, and it was Rivka that said... And I had heard your sermons over and over yeah, again. Yeah. It wasn't like I was like, oh, he's amazing. Yeah. And but was like, you're it was, meant but, to do but this. But what I knew in that, and then it was you that was like, I believe that began the impetus toward us leading the congregation. Well, when it comes to, to you, so I come from a, a, a time, I guess, where when you got married, you you didn't have two different goals. Husbands didn't do what they wanted to do, and wives did what they wanted to do and you just supported each other and did your own things, you were one and you did the same thing together. Right. So in... Particularly in ministry. Particularly, yeah. Um, because if you're just, you know, if you're, if you're not doing ministry together and you're just, you can have different careers right, and stuff sure. like that. But even that will bring up conflict because people can get job offers and... Be pulled in different directions. In, in completely different directions. And so... You know, when we were younger, like you didn't, you didn't date someone that didn't have the same calling as you. Absolutely not. Because you wanted to be one in unity doing the same thing. Right. <clears throat> so that's what we came from. Um, and so when I never ever, in the 26 years we've been together, it's never even occurred to me to not do something that you were called to do or that the Lord wanted us to do or whatever um, due to... Like, it never occurred to me to not do it. It's not a thought that even goes into my head. Like, yeah, I didn't want to do this, so I'm honest with people. Because a lot of people will say, well, if the Lord wants me to do it, he'll give me the desire to do it, which you don't really see a lot of that biblically. I have not ever experienced. What Moses didn't want to, Jeremiah I mean, didn't want yeah, to, Jonah so, didn't want to. But a lot of people will say that, right. and I've never had that experience where I'm like, yes, this is what I want to do. Typically, when the Lord is calling me to do something, it, it requires sacrifice and not small sacrifice, not like, oh, I guess I'm not going to live near my family, but a personal dying to self sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And but I never ever consider not that not making that sacrifice for for you. If it's something that you need or you want or the Lord wants you to do or whatever, yeah. I'm immediately on it. I'm like, okay, then let's do that. Like even when we were in a ministry position many many years ago, and there was some conflict. And Cosmo was having conflict with, um, he wasn't having conflict with another staff member. The staff member honestly had conflict with him. And Cosmo's not the kind of guy to be like, okay, I'm sorry. Like he will, you know, he stands up and is like, actually, uh, no, you know. So there was conflict there. And we were at this uh, banquet and he came in all flushed and upset. Yeah. No, we don't have to tell the story. I'm not telling the story, but it's not like I, if I had been in the wrong, I was happy to say I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but, but I was... You were not in the wrong. I was And not. so he came in all flushed and upset, and he came and sat next to me, and I know my husband, and I know his countenance, and he's really upset. And I just said to him, if we need, if you need us to quit this job and leave, we can do that. Like, I didn't care what it cost me 
or anything, if that's what you needed us to do, then we'll do that. Right. And so that's how I have. So, loved. but I remember in that in that moment when you said that when you because even though you the Lord told you, you're like the Lord told me this is what, um, what I made him to do. Um, you didn't. You could have kept. You didn't have to tell me that. Hmm. You telling me that was an well, acknowledgement <clears throat> of I'm like. It, I didn't have to tell you that, but for me, yeah. If the Lord tells me to do yeah. something, it's not even. It's not even. It's not out of conviction. Mm -hmm. It's not a conviction that I'm like, well, the Lord told me to do this, so I'm going to tell him. There's like a burning uh, stone in my gut that doesn't allow me peace until I've obeyed and right. done what I'm supposed to do. So when I'll say that in that moment, I knew that that you can acknowledging that reality, even saying that aloud um, was a death to self. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with what you wanted or to your own personal ambitions or desires um, that it was very self-sacrificial. Mm -hmm. And I, in that moment, I'm internally, I don't think I became emotional. Like I got choked up. It, I it, don't remember that. Because I, I didn't. Oh, you I, didn't share that. I didn't share that. Okay. I just was, it, it affected me in such <clears throat> a way that um, like I was, it, it meant a lot to me. So that was a moment where I felt um, loved in a, in, a, in a unique way. So. Mm hmm what? What are, you, what are you laughing at? Oh, I'm just laughing because uh, because the years afterwards, every time, not every time, but when I would be like, oh, like I don't like this or I'm uncomfortable or I'm un unhappy with having to do this or this is hard for me, this is difficult for me, you would be like, well, God told you this is what we're supposed to do. <laughs> there was never like, like once I got, once I put that out there, um. all of a sudden it was like, now you have to love it. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm not loving this. Yeah. But. yeah. All right. Well, I know we've gone uh, long, but... Um, have we? I, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Well. All right. Well, thanks for trying to stir up trouble, Lauren. And thanks <laughs> to... Uh, I love you, Lauren. <laughs> thanks to everyone else for listening. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom, shalom. Have a beautiful day.